Hi, hello, good morning, and welcome to this week's serving of Mickey Waffles, a Disney podcast where we cover everything from parks, movies, and merchandise. My name is Sinead. My name's Kate. Hi, guys. How's it going? I'm good, KP. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Everything's good, everything's fine, everything's moving on. Schools are closing very... down. Oh, God, stop. <laughs> apparently Although there's... Kildare's out of lockdown, so that's a positive. Yeah, and apparently there's no impending doom of lockdown for Dublin, but, like, I don't know, I just... Nothing makes sense to me anymore. People are still not wearing their masks right, and I'm just like, oh. I have to say... I was in I was in Dundrum yesterday. I had to bring a shirt back and then I've started back doing couch to 5k this week. Have nearly thrown up the two times that I've gone for a run, but I haven't Excellent. actually thrown up, so I'm taking that as a positive. However, because we live in Ireland, I need a jacket that I can run in. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I would also really like some gym gear that has pockets because mm. seemingly women's workout wear, why the fuck would we ever need pockets? Not like we need to, you know, bring a key or a phone or anything men's work out here all have pockets but why the fuck should we get pockets hey it's, it, it ruins it ruins the womanly figure honestly <laughs> so i went to have a goo and see if i could find a running jacket i found one but it looks horrible on me so i'm going to get one from the north face which is extortionately expensive but did you go to gym and coffee no oh you should go I to gym they and coffee did, like, hoodies. no they do like running stuff Oh, it's, see, I want something waterproof. It's athleisure, but it's like the more athletic side of athleisure, if that makes sense. Interesting. You see, should go to. I've, you should have gone to gym and coffee. Hmm. See, I've now found a really nice jacket on the North Face. Oh, okay. And I can still get discounts on the North Face as long as it's not black. Mm. Is it black? Well, it comes in black or it comes in like an orangey red, and I'm just... more going towards the orangey red. But I feel like the black is much more versatile. But the black, then you just become one of those boyos that wears the North Face head to toe boyo. and sets off firecrackers at two two in the afternoon on his little BMX. <laughs> just because you moved to a dodgy repair to Dublin case, that, that oi, does not oi, reflect my ayo, fashion choices. Ayo, those North Face lads, they be all over the place now. Don't you be, just be putting them towards where I live. They are all over the shop. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll send you a link to the jacket that I'm looking at and we can get your um, your live reaction. I'm sure everybody cares, but the whole reason why I started talking about my jacket and the fact that I was in Dundrum is that there was a shocking number of people in Dundrum that just weren't wearing jackets. Jackets? No. <laughs> weren't wearing what? face masks. <laughs> they just, like, were they not cold? Like, they just weren't wearing their masks. They just weren't wearing their jackets. But, like, they just oh. weren't wearing masks at all. I like it in the orange. Do you not think that's better if you're at night time? Because maybe because if it gets dark and while you're out, especially like as we get into the winter months, yeah, and where you live, like black is very hard to see. True, true. But But I do want it's extortionately expensive, so I'm very happy I still get discount. I can actually see no price. Oh, it's at the top. Oh, wow, that is expensive. Yeah, it's because it's future light trademark, whatever the fuck that is. That's why it's more expensive. Oh, but it's also chosen by Fernanda Maciel. So it's like a it's like a pick. Once like a, someone of one once like someone of like notil like noted notable. Someone once someone notable picks like a like a like a section of clothing from a distributor, it automatically becomes like ten bajillion times more expensive. Well yeah, there's there's a ridiculous number of people that either are not wearing masks or are not wearing masks correctly and yeah. it just baffles me. If the amount of them wear them like this. Yeah. For anybody that can't see, Kate is currently <laughs> holding a clothes peg directly under her nose <laughs> to demonstrate how people are incorrectly wearing masks. Like this or like this. So many like yeah. this. Or like they take them off to talk to me and I'm like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> It's like I can hear you, don't you worry. I don't know how this works. <laughs> or, yeah, they're still doing that whole, like, walking towards me thing. And I'm like, keep your distance. Don't know where you've been. Don't know the last time you washed your hands. Keep your distance. <sighs> yeah. People people are a bit daft. People are a bit daft. I think this Both. podcast could totally turn into just me ranting about people not wearing their masks. Every yeah. week. And every week I'd have a different story. <laughs> absolutely 
Mm. So how's your week been, KP? Yeah, it's been fine. Nothing overly exciting has happened. But like, it's been fine. Finish season two of Buffy. Oh my God, what a season. Season two was so different to season one. Like obviously, because season one was like a pilot season and they didn't, I assume they didn't think they were going to get enough money to do the season two. Hmm. And that's why season one ends the way it does. But season two, like there's double the amount of episodes. Stuff takes so many different turns. And I just, so we've not gone on to season three of Buffy because we said we'd watch season one of X-Files, but now I'm like itching to watch season three of Buffy. And I'm like, could we maybe just maybe like watch like one, like one episode? Because the thing is we watched episode three of X-Files, which apparently is the creepiest episode of X-Files that has ever been made. And it's like, it's the most notorious episode. And so we yeah. watched it and there's like this whole thing with like eyes and darkness. And I just, I watched the whole thing through my fingers because I didn't enjoy it. And I was like, can we watch Buffy again? Buffy was so lighthearted. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed was like, that's probably like the scariest episode of X-Files that's ever been made. And I'm like, oh, okay, if you promise, because like I can't do this every day. <laughs> oh no. Um, I just went and checked and I am on the last episode of season one of Buffy. So I'm just about to start season two. Okay, excellent. We definitely need like a season one, season two recap. Even though it's not Disney, I feel like the people who listen to this podcast also listen to Once Upon a Scream, who are also very Buffy related. So I feel like, you know, you guys would be up for it. And honestly, since we can't get to the parks, you're just going to have to deal with it because there's very limited amount of content we can discuss. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And we actually had the lovely Ben from Once Upon a Scream message us last week wanting to come on and chat about Buffy and about Disney and everything. So expect that sometime soon. Yep. Just just deal with it, lads. So there's going to be a week where it's mostly Buffy. Also, just to call out, I'm well aware that we mentioned about 17,000 times last week that we were going to have Ryan on as a guest this week. Oh, and yeah. you'll have noticed we're not being extremely rude. We don't have Ryan this week. <gasps> oh my- Imagine we got 15 minutes in and just didn't introduce him and he was just sitting there in silence. <laughs> You'd like muted him and be like, not yet, Ryan. Hush. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, so there was just like, there was just scheduling issues this week. He'll be on next week. We guarantee it. Yes, absolutely. Without a doubt. Yeah. So apologies <laughs> for that. What else have you been watching, Kate? Good Lord. Uh, what else have I been watching? I've been watching some stuff on Disney+. Plus. So yeah. I watched Magic Camp, which has, I'll tell you now, it has the girl from Community and the guy from uh, Pitch Perfect. Which guy from Pitch Perfect? Hold on, I'll tell you their names now. I just wasn't prepared for the situation. Adam Devine, who's the like little squat guy from Pitch Perfect. Oh, okay. Who goes out with your one Amy. And then Julian Jacobs from Community. Okay. Yeah. So like it's actually pretty like I say it's pretty good. It's your very standard like Disney template. Okay. So there's a kid, his dad died. The only thing that his dad's connected like the thing that connected him most with his dad was magic. When his dad died, he stopped doing magic. Then he gets accepted into this magic camp where he does magic. And then Adam Devine, who's Andy Duckerman in the movie, becomes like his role model figure. And then stuff happens and they build a relationship. And then there's a big finale at the end and your man's missing because he's gone to do a thing. And it's perfect Disney template, but it was actually pretty good. I quite enjoyed it. There was some, there was some actual funny bits and there's a fair bit of, uh, I say diversity. It's like Disney diversity. It's like okay. Disney hasn't, do you know, Disney is like clearly trying to diversify themselves with like different races and different sexual orientations and that kind of stuff yeah. within their like Disney Channel and Disney Plus original stuff. So like mm-hmm. there was a kid who was clearly gay who didn't want to be a magician but wanted to design the costumes. And there was different races okay. within the cast and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's like a small step, I guess. Definitely still not great. It's still a majority white Caucasian cast. But you know, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I listened to so the, um, on the After Dark Network on the Patreon, Nick and Craig predominantly review a lot of the Disney Plus original movies. 
but this week they had or this month anyways they had p-dabs on as well and i think they all ended up giving it like eight out of ten or something like that they all spoke very highly of it yeah i quite liked it now rotten tomatoes right the um <laughs> tomatoes 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 the audience score is 48 percent, and the critic score is 45 percent. so like it's pretty crap but like i don't know yeah so like some of them are like equally inoffensive and unremarkable. Magic Camp is likely to vanish amongst the plethora of superior Disney Plus titles. The familiarity and cliche elements will exhaust most viewers, but it may surprise those wanting a lighthearted and family centric film. Like, yeah, I think the problem is if you took it like you wanted it to be like The Mandalorian, let's say, it wasn't going to yeah. be The Mandalorian as a Disney Plus original. It was, it's basically a decom that yes. is a Disney Plus original. That's basically okay. what it is. And so once you go into that being like, oh, cool, it's a throwaway decom kind of thing. It's like, yeah, I enjoyed those 90 minutes. They were enjoyable enough. Okay. Um, my only gripe with it would be that Jeffrey Tambor is in it. And Jeffrey Tambor is not a great guy and I don't really like him. So that's my only problem with the movie. But okay. other than that, yeah, I thought it was good. If you're looking for like a decom-esque movie, I'd give it a go. That's fair. I might check it out. I probably won't, but oh, I might check right. it out. Excellent. You know what Good I'm stuff. Like. So what else have you been watching? Um, I also watched the new Phineas and Ferb movie. Okay. So the Phineas and Ferb movie is Phineas and Ferb, the movie Candace Against the Universe. So it's heavily based on Candace. Candace? Candace. But also Ashley Tisdale is back to voice Candace, which is fantastic. I, oh, think they, I think they have the entire cast back. I didn't actually check, to be honest. But like just from listening to the voices, I'm like, oh, this is clearly everyone. Like no one sounds any different. So it's good that everyone's come back. Yeah. Look, there's not much to say about this movie apart from it is your fantastic, like absolute nonsense that goes on in a Phineas and Ferb movie. So there's been loads of Phineas and Ferb movies. There's been a good few at this stage. There's like Phineas and Ferb with Marvel, Phineas and Ferb, um, it like the 2D Dimension one. There's been a good few of you good few of them and yeah this one's good but it's like mainly focused on Candace which is a nice turn but yeah there's a lot of um there's a song in it about and it's called like (laughs) because I'm adulting and I'm like oh cool it's like in Frozen 2 when they have that song that Olaf song about like and we all look oh, a little yeah. bit older and like Olaf talks directly to the screen and it's like, oh wow, it's like, hey, we know what age you were when you watched Phineas and Ferb and we know that you're still watching it now, but you're eight years older. <laughs> Fair. And it, it like, it was one of those kind of songs which I thought was quite funny. But yeah, if you ever enjoyed Phineas and Ferb, definitely watch it. It's, it's, it's really good. I've never, never in my life have I watched a single Phineas and Ferb thing. However... Some of my favorite songs from the old Disney Store Christmas soundtrack were the Phineas and Ferb Christmas songs because they were just bloody brilliant. Yeah. And also, when I was in Walt Disney World, they still had a Phineas and Ferb meet and greet. And it was honestly one of my favorite character interactions of that whole holiday because they were just great crack. So I like Phineas and Ferb. I just don't ever watch anything. But I probably should, given that I actually like the characters. Yeah, like, the characters are great. Like, the, like I think you'd like it. Like, it's funny. Like, yeah. it's smart funny, if you know what I mean. Like, it's very highbrow for Disney for a Disney Channel. Which is, you know what I mean? Like, it's not the yeah, same no, as you. any of their other stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah. Especially, like, if you, if you guys have Disney Plus and you've never watched any of Phineas and Ferb, go for it. Like, the episodes are so short and you don't really have to pay attention. But it's, like, it's funny. Like, the ongoing like same format for every episode it's it's good i like it i have watched nothing new on disney plus however i did re-watch hamilton for about the 16th time last friday I had a great time excellent that was a bit Love it. i just decision. i'd gotten on such a like kick of listening to hamilton during the week that it got to friday evening and i was like Do you know what i'm just gonna watch it so I ended up having to watch it over friday evening and saturday morning so i watched act one on Friday evening and then I watched the rest on Saturday morning which was great that's not a bad way to do it if you've already watched it like exactly meant I got to start my Saturday morning off with what did I miss which is just a cracking way to start your day 
Um, and then I decided I was going to rewatch Rise of Skywalker because I still only see it once. I had such great intentions of rewatching it on um, Star Wars Day. Never got around to it. And yeah, I didn't cry this time, which I was impressed with because I swear well I spent my entire time watching it in the cinema just bawling my eyes crying. But yeah, I know a lot of people hate on Rise of Skywalker and don't get me wrong, I have my own issues with it. But I think as a whole, it's a good movie and I really enjoy it. Yeah, there are some bits in it that I like, but also like... There was no need I... for them to kiss. There was no need. Oh my God, what a stupid no bloody need. scene. Why? Why, why, why? Like, why? Just why? Why did they need to do that? I, so that was so unnecessary. And from... I just remember watching it and being like, man, that was really for the fans. Like, ev- like nearly everything in it was just like a fan pleaser. Yeah. Which, you know, when, when you get to that stage in Disney, it's your third one. They're like, we just want money. <laughs> exactly. They just want to sell merch. Just give the fans what they want kind of thing. Exactly. Um, and then the only other thing I've been watching, I've been really enjoying Canada's Drag Race. And if nobody's been watching that, it's actually really good. It's very different to American Drag Race. So would highly recommend. And I mentioned last week that I'm... I've convinced myself that I'm going to try and make myself like horror movies. So I'm making the start oh, yeah. on that this weekend. Oh, so, excellent. Yeah. So I kind of figured I'd start with the like super 90s camp horror because I figured that's that's probably something I can handle. So I'm going to start with Scream. Oh, okay. Scream. Scream is the one with the phone? Yes, and Ghostface. Nope. <laughs> I'm excited though because there's so many of these like camp like 90s horror movies that I've listened to the Once Upon a Scream episodes for having never seen the movie so now I'm gonna go watch the movie and then go re-listen to Ben and Mikey talk about it oh, and yeah, then I'll no. actually have context about it the closest I get to watching horror movies is listening to Once Upon a Scream when they talk about horror movies and even at that I'm like ugh <laughs> yeah except I do, no, I, I watched Krampus, but not because of Once Upon a Scream, because it was a house in Universal one year. And Mm. when I looked at reviews for it, all the reviews were like, it's like stupid scary. So I watched that and actually wasn't anywhere near scary as I thought it was going to be because I think of like the storyline. But that was the only horror-esque movie I think I've watched. And A Quiet Place, but that's only because there's sign language in it. Fair. That, that like look if you want to put sign language in every single horror movie i'll watch them because i also watched what was the other one called quiet or hush hush that's the one that's the netflix one that's about yeah. a deaf woman as well i'm like look if they're deaf or they know sign language i'm there <laughs> kate is here for it kate's here to support it <laughs> give um, us the diversity <laughs> yeah no that's fair so yeah i think i'm going to start with some of the like campier ones i do want to watch I'd say maybe the second one I'll watch will be Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Yeah, I might, yeah. That's one that I maybe possibly could probably maybe sometimes watch. There we <laughs> go. Um, so my plan is get all the campy 90s ones out of the way and then maybe go for some of the more like classic ones, maybe like Halloween and that kind of thing. I'm, I feel like I need to like work my way up to like the likes of like The Exorcist and stuff because I don't know if I can handle that yet. But nope. we'll see. Ah. No, once I try to watch, so there's Get Out, and then what was Us? Us was the newest yeah. one. So Us came out on Sky Movies, and I was like, right, I'm gonna try and watch it. But I was watching it in broad daylight on public transport on my phone, and on I was like, transport. I was like, so this will be fine. I was like, I won't get scared. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. It got to the first. It was like the first ten minutes aren't really that scary. It's just story yeah. build up. It got to the first kind of scary bit and I was like ah <laughs> I feel like headphones would be so intense though oh I turn it down I turn it way way down oh, okay fair. and I put the subtitles on <laughs> I see I did that um years ago when the woman in black came out first my then boyfriend won tickets to go to like the premiere for it and I was like oh no it's fine I don't need to go and he was like no no we'll go we'll go and I was like but I don't want to go and he was like no no we'll go it'll be fine and um I like was petrified and i was like 
just Harry Potter. It's Harry Potter. It's Harry oh, Potter. It's fine. Yeah. It's Harry Potter. And it got to like the first jump scare and I was like, nope. And I literally sat like head in my hands and managed to convince myself to fall asleep. And then I just slept through the rest of the movie. It's jump scares that get me. That's when yeah. I was watching that episode of X-Files yesterday. I checked because Ed's what I think Ed's seen season one to something. And I turned to him and went, you have to tell me now, are there jump scares? Because if they're jump scares, I'm just going to close my eyes and listen to the entire episode. Because because in it's it's done very well like the the music changes when like the monster is there so i can tell when things are going to happen but i'm like you have to are there are there or are there not jump scares because yeah. if you lie to me that's it we're over <laughs> never lie to me about jump scares ever <laughs> no i feel you i feel you ah. yeah i feel like i feel like i actually haven't watched a load of stuff recently i feel like i've just mainly been catching up i feel like there's an awful lot of podcasts that have come out recently mm-hmm. yeah. and i feel like mm-hmm. especially on the network in the past week there's been like 10 million podcasts yeah um and i feel like we should give so we've had nick on the show before nick from the after Dark network and nick's latest podcast that he's adding to his ten thousand other podcast is this is your life and i think episode four got released it did today. yeah mm-hmm. yeah um, I'm really enjoying it. I think it's a really, really fun series. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Like listening to people who didn't really think they had much to do with Disney and then finding mm. out, Jesus, I had loads to do with Disney. <laughs> yeah, there was one of them, I think it might have been episode two, where, and I won't pretend like I remember everybody that he's interviewed. But whoever was on episode two, he asked them about like a memorable moment from when they were visiting the parks. And they were talking about when it gets to nighttime and you're on Main Street and all the lights come on and all that kind of stuff. And I and genuinely started like welling up, just like picturing that exact moment on Main <sighs> Street. And I was like, oh, this is too much. I can't yeah. handle this. Mm, yeah. I, but um, yeah. I often wonder, and I feel like we should ask this, Nick this, because obviously these people are more casual disney fans unlike us psychopaths that like spend all of our time talking about disney and whatnot i often wonder because there's a couple times where they'll say things slightly off and i often wonder oh. if nick has to kind of like bite his tongue not to like yeah because mm-hmm. if he does he's doing a great job at it yeah because it's like he when battles this is like like the same idea one of ed's like i had some friends over the other week and we ended up talking about oh there was there was a massive bag of tato on the table and there was an advertisement for tato park on the back and one of his friends hasn't lived in ireland for a while and he was like tato park like is that like a theme park on tato and all sorts of stuff blah 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 and we ended up talking about disney world and he started saying stuff about disney world and i was like oh no no that's disneyland like that's Disneyland." and he was like i um and ed literally turned around and he went don't even try he was like you'll lose <laughs> <laughs> he was like just quit while you're ahead anything you say is wrong <laughs> I was like thanks thanks for the back up <laughs> but yeah no I feel you because there's a couple times where people will say stuff like that and you're like you really you really yeah. didn't try question mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. my biggest faux pas is when people say Disneyland Florida and I'm like <laughs> yeah. I'm like no it's a no no and like to me I'm like get it right to them they're like you're crazy <laughs> yeah like what's the big deal it's like when people still call DLP Euro Disney yeah well yeah I understand that but then the thing is like some people call um Hollywood Studios MG- MGM and True. like I'm yeah, fine you know, with that no but you know who calls Hollywood Studios MGM dickheads that like to say that they went when it was still at MGM Oh, fair. Okay. These are people that just yeah. want to be able to say, oh, was the I went to when it was MGM. So oh, I'm just yeah. going to call it MGM. <laughs> like those people. <laughs> I'm a pass holder. I'm a pass holder. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. I gave Disney a chunk of money once. So, you know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Have you picked up any Disney bits recently, Kate? Have I picked up any? <gasps> Actually, we both picked up Disney bits last week. Oh, yeah. You tell the people. Okay. <laughs> it, was, so, it, was, it was your thing, so you tell the people. <laughs> so we mentioned on our episode last week, or at least it was one of my picks, this custom Starbucks cold cups that we wanted to get from 
I think it's Little Lilac Makes is the name of the shop. So we went on and we ordered them. Kate, you got Winnie the Pooh with a pot of honey. Yeah, little Pooh Bear. And I got Jack and Zero. I feel we we went very. I feel like this is what people probably would have expected each of us to get. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and then, oh, we were so on brand. <laughs> so on brand. So much so that we both got then got Mickey waffles on the back. Mm-hmm. So we'll have little cups for when we're recording, which will be real cute. So we'll let you know when they arrive and we'll show you what they look like um, on the Insta and whatnot. Um, so that was exciting. And then I was, I mentioned it to Kate briefly beforehand. So I mentioned last week about double box toys so if you didn't listen to last week's episode double box toys is a website that basically just resell a lot of the exclusive things from the american parks but you buy from a uk site and the shipping comes from a uk warehouse now i ordered the disneyland halloween spare jersey and i ordered the madame leota haunted mansion card holder and i ordered them on the 10th of august And today, which is the 2nd of September, the card holder shipped. So that's like Mm. three weeks and there's still no sign of my spirit jersey are coming. And it's not just me that's... Because initially I kind of thought, oh, well, maybe it's because it has to go to a different country. But the aforementioned Ryan, who'll be on next week, um, seemingly he's having a similar issue. He ordered two spirit jerseys and he hasn't had them arrive yet either. So if you are ordering from Double Box Toys be patient is all i'll say because the shipping seems to be taking a really fucking long time i wonder do they not keep things like in warehouse do they like buy them as they get the orders yeah that's what ryan was saying he his theory is that they have somebody in north america that buys the stuff as and when Mm -hmm. and then they ship it over to the uk um and then they resell it I'm not saying this is actually true. These are all just theories. I don't want to be calling anybody out for avoiding tax or whatever. <laughs> We're now just a conspiracy theory podcast, it seems. Um, oh, maybe we should start one. Is there is there a conspiracy theory podcast on the network? I don't know. There is the like ghost one that mm. kind of deals with some conspiracy theory type thingies, but mm, not true, really. True, 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 true. Mm, That's I just, probably about the close of it. I love doing conspiracy theories. They're just like, wow. Well, Wow. Lads, if you could see the excitement on <laughs> Kate's face, it is unreal. Just look, I know we don't talk about Shane Dawson anymore because he's a really awful person, but when he had that conspiracy theory about the Chuck E. Cheese pizzas, my mind was just... Like, I think that was the best conspiracy theory he's ever released. Because it's true. Yeah. Like, it's, it had to be true. There's no way. It's just the way they cut the pizza. Yeah, no. And if you don't know <laughs> what we're talking about... Google it. Don't watch the video. Don't give him views, but give it a go. Oh, no. Don't give him views. He's not worth it anymore. Ah. But with all that aside, should we fight? Should we get on to a bit of news? Yes, the news. <laughs> so, we're starting off with pin time with Kate. <laughs> Haven't had pin time in a while, actually. Um, no. I mean, due to the fact that the parks have been closed. <laughs> I mean, we, we we were technically supposed to have pins probably about this time last month, but we couldn't record that week, so... Yeah, and then I just winter. forgot, and then it didn't matter anymore. So here we are! Hi. Pin time with Kate. So first off, we've got... So this is September 2020 pins. Uh, mm-hmm. First off, we have this... Um, I want to call it the Rock the Dot the rock the dots collection because when we worked in the store the whole mini mouse thing was called rock the dots and i see that it's not called this it's just called pin collection mini mini poise or something it's called mini something i'm calling it the rock the dots and that's just the way it is so first off we have one with mini posing with a robe which is a dress so it's a bow that looks like a dress oh no a dress that looks like a bow Jesus, Kate, get your words right. So it's a mini mouse with a dress that looks like a... But it's very risque, shall we say. I'm like, oh, mini. Really pull it in that waist. And that's $7.99. Then we have one where the bow are like butterfly wings. And Minnie's like, oh, my goodness, you caught me off guard. And that one's $9.99. Then there's one with Minnie in a bag. And she's like, yes, I got my bag. What are you going to do about it? With her hands on her hip. And that one's seven ninety nine. And then there's a cute lanyard, which to be fair, the lanyard's actually pretty nice if you yeah. 
if you were going to like oh, probably not now due to COVID, but like if you were going to Disneyland Paris and you weren't really into Disney, you were just like on a family vacay and you wanted to get like a souvenir or something like that, I feel like this would be the style of lanyard that you'd get. It's just like it's a, a very lanyard. Yeah, it's like a cute basic Minnie Mouse lanyard and it's twelve ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Then we move on to September 12th and we have the exclusive ones, so the limited edition ones. So we're starting off with a cute little Chip and Dale one and they have an Easter egg, but it's celebrating Paquet? What's that? Joyeuse? No. Shall I Google it? Yeah, do. P-A-Q-U-E-S. So it looks like they have Easter eggs, but... Yeah, it's Easter wow so it must have been their easter it must have been their easter pin that they just couldn't release because of covid that's what? so weird that they are releasing their easter pin now yeah. they must have already been made well yeah true actually so it, it's actually a really cute pin it's chip and dale well only dale's eating the egg that's the problem um they're limited to 700 and they're 15.99 the second one is of maleficent which is I'm just going to keep Googling these things. Print Tomps. That's like before time or something, is it? Oh, that'd be pre tomp They're limited to 700 again, also fifteen oh, ninety nine. It's a French department store, seemingly. No. Oh, maybe it's a season. It's spring. Spring. It's spring. Maleficent. That doesn't make much sense. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Anyway, so we've got a delightful spring pin with Maleficent on it for fifteen ninety nine, and then we have a July the fourteenth pin for twenty twenty with uh, Bruni from Frozen Two, the Salamander, and he's on it, and it's limited to seven hundred and fifteen ninety nine. What the Why? heck are these releases? <laughs> Why? Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a step back here. So we've got the fourteenth of July. Which, yeah, with a salamander. With a salamander. And why do the why do the pins that come out my birthday make no sense? So like obviously so okay, so what gets me right? So obviously 14th of July is Bastille, it's Bastille Day in France, which is like yeah. their independence day, but not their independence day. I realise it's not their independence day. No one come after me. I'm just Is it kind right? of like the rising? Kind of. It's kind of like the Easter Rising, yeah. Okay. So, but like, why Bruni? Why? Why not a French character? Right? Like, there's mm. so many of them. So many Disney animated classics are set in France. Yeah. So, any, anywho, moving on. <laughs> then on the 19th of September, there's a pretty, pretty lanyard. Ooh. So this is an kind annual of that, lanyard. Kind of gives me those like Castle Club vibes. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got the same vibe to it. So it's really cute. It says Pass Annuel. It's 10 euro. If I was there, to be honest, I'd probably buy it. Same. Then moving on to Saturday, 26th of September, we have some more limited edition release. So there's the World's Best Friend pin, which to be fair, this one makes sense. It's Baymax and Hero. <laughs> Besties. Limited to 700, 15.99, really cute. And then we're back on those carousel pins, which I kind of forgot about. And it's Pocahontas on a horse. Cool. Don't think it's her horse. Uh, limited to 700, 15.99. Then there's also open edition pins of Rainbow, Mickey and Minnie. So interesting. So if you think of Mickey Mouse and you think of his shorts, the shorts are rainbow. The rest of him is silver. And if you think yeah. of Minnie, her dress and her bow are rainbow and the rest of her is silver. So they're open edition, so they're not limited at all. They're 7 99 each. I'd like to see them in person. Yeah, I think they could. We're going to talk in a minute about the new annual pass pins. I think they'll kind of look like them. Oh, you think? Actually, yeah, that would make sense. They'll just be really like shiny, but then they'll just have the bits cut. I actually don't know. So I assume obviously these pins then were meant for Pride, which never happened in Disney. And then on Wednesday, the 30th of September, we move on to the spoopy pins, which we've already talked about. So I'll just run through them really quickly. We've got, they're all open edition. We've got Spooky Mickey Mouse, who's $6.99. Skeleton and Pluto, who's $9.99. Vampirina Donald, who's $6.99. We have the, the double pack of the Candy Cane Castle, Candy Corn Castle, sorry, and the, pump, and the Mickey Pumpkin for $12.99. And then we have Chip and Dale holding these massive 
pieces of candy for 12 99 and that's all the Halloween pins. I'd also just like to jump in before we finish this, jump into my own sentence. Yes, that's what I did. These mm-hmm. characters are the exact same characters that are being used in America this year. So do you know the way usually yeah. Paris gets different versions of them? These mm-hmm. are bang on the exact same characters that are being used in America. And I'm yeah, like... And I, have, mm, I have to say, I really don't like the Chippendale pin. Chippendale versus... You rangers no but last I, year's one was way better yeah and i was about to say i think it's because i loved last year's chippendale pins so much but i mean that's because they were frankenstein and frankenstein's monster so i was never they were never not gonna be my fave it, i went to the effort of ordering them online because i couldn't find them yeah but last year's one were just better they, were they, just, they just were a better design which is unfortunate because the rest of the pins this year are actually pretty cute like mm. the mickey and the pluto and the donald and that kind of stuff but yeah. yeah, so that's it for pin time with Kate. No, it's not. There's two more pins, Kate. Oh, you're right. Pin time with Kate part two. So there's been two <laughs> annual pass pins that have been recently released in Disneyland Paris. They are open edition. They're six ninety nine, and they're on sale to anyone, even though they're annual pass pins. So the first one is this really cute like sketchbook of the castle with Mickey Mouse in front of it, which matches the lanyard that's going to be released. And then there's this like shiny, I assume it's silver, but it could also be gold. No, no, it's silver Mickey Mouse with the gold silhouette of the castle on him. And he's like, hey pal. And they're both six ninety nine, and they're actually pretty cute. I'm not a fan of the silver one. I think it would be nice in person. I think the reflection of that person's hand makes it look a bit naff. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but I think if you saw it in person, like on a pin stand, you'd be like, ooh, interesting. But what gets me in Disneyland Paris is they make these annual pass holder pins, but anyone can buy them. Yeah, like you don't actually have to show an annual pass. Yeah, like what's the to point? get them? Yeah, I don't know. Even if they had them in like that you could only buy them in a certain shop or anything like that, but they just have them everywhere. Yeah. Anywho, now it really is the end of Pin Time with Kate. And moving on from that, (laughs) speaking of annual passes. So the annual pass office in the Disneyland Park is closing. So it closed from yesterday, which was the 1st of September. And now you need to go to ticket windows 7 through 12 outside the Walt Disney Studios Park. And it only opens at 12 p.m. And it's open till 6 p.m. So if you're planning on getting there, bang on park opening and going to get your AP, tough shit. You ain't doing it. Like, what if you had something wrong with your pass? Like, I just, like, what if you needed... What to if- put it very bluntly, I don't think Disneyland Paris gives a rat's ass. Oh, no, I don't think I, I don't think I care at all. Um, speaking of not caring at all, Rhythms of the Pride Land has been temporarily suspended Eww. until further notice. So literally last week we were talking about how... The Jungle Book Drive was told that it couldn't go ahead. And I was like, hey, why is Rhythm of the Pride Land still going ahead? Well, no, it's not. <laughs> so that's the end of all the fun for this fest, for this whole like Lion King and Jungle Festival. They were like, no, it'll still go ahead. All that's left are the like snacks and they're the exact same snacks that they had last year. Yeah, they really did try. And I know a lot of the merch for this year is already on like super mega discount on yeah. the like merch carts and stuff everything seems to be like 40 percent off so yeah and like yeah. they must be really struggling because like french law states you can only have sales twice a year and they're obviously yeah. using this time to have one of their sales so like they must be like fuck we need to get rid of it i'm moving on to my favorite subject it's officially september which means it's, a spe- it's especially it's officially spooky season i'm so excited <laughs> But we should really have Vive la Vie on, so I'll put that on instead. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) So we had some announcements come about the Disneyland Paris Halloween season this year. So it'll be kicking off on September 26th and run right the way up till Halloween. So what they have announced is that, so the Meet Mickey Mouse area within Fantasyland is going to have Mickey Mouse and friends but they're going to be wearing their Halloweeny outfits so 
I assume it'll probably be the same Halloween outfits that they wear traditionally for the brunch that they do in Intervention. So you can probably expect Chippendale in their free Meg outfits. We can only hope. Um, and then there's also going to be fun selfie spots around the park. So Maleficent Donald is going to be out. Also, can I, just, can I just call out Nick and Paul for slagging off Maleficent Donald and saying that it should really be Daisy being Maleficent and that there's many other male villains that Donald could be. Lads, if Donald wants to be in drag for Halloween, bloody let him. Don't get me started on Craig and his dislike of specific characters. <clears throat> Figment. How dare he. <sighs> we're gonna start fights with all the network now this is before ryan absolutely well no because ryan defended figment uh, but like craig you just run into the bloody ground for no reason whatsoever that dragon did not deserve that well okay all i'll say is don't ask ryan about his feelings about hamilton because you won't like them no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Any more about halloween so- tonight <laughs> <laughs> so Maleficent Donald's going to be out, out and about. Maleficent is going to be in the castle courtyard. I assume where they've had Aurora and Philip come out a little bit on that balcony mm. in the castle. I assume Maleficent will pop out there and kind of oversee her briars because seemingly the briars are going to be back. Um, Ursula is going to be on the castle stage similar to where she was doing her performances. And then there's going to be some other people dotted across the other lands. There have been... Like Froyo. Ex- huh? Froyo. Froyo? Isn't he called Frodo? Oh, Frollo. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My bad. Um, I was trying to be funny and call him Froyo, but I was... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, what? Mm. But, um, they have started putting up some of the decorations in around Frontierland. There's been some areas with some screen put up, so I think they're going to... I hope they do the same level of decorating mm, for yeah. DLP because honestly the DLP Halloween decorations like the only thing that beats them is the massive pumpkin in Disneyland yeah. but the DLP Halloween decorations are just ah, death's kiss um, and then there's also going to be they're saying that there's going to be surprises around the parade route they've had the princesses parading up and down in carriages so I assume they're probably going to do something similar with villains mm-hmm. I don't really know and then they're actually, for one, it's going to bring a bit of Halloween into the studios part, which is terrifically exciting. And I'm just trying to find a screen shot where they say it. Because... Well, I mean, they got to do something. Because, like, exactly. this isn't really the year to be like, ah, fucking deal with it, because they've got nothing else to offer. <laughs> exactly. So I can't find this screenshot about it but basically where they've been doing the marvel meet and greets is going to be a villain's selfie spot oh that's interesting and a lot of the visuals so i think there's going to be a lot of the like kind of standard ones so you're going to have your i think maleficent might be in there i think cruella that kind of thing all of the like people from inside ears that i've seen post about it have all been using hades and i'm kind of like oh yeah use me Mm, mm mm-hmm so it does say that there may be some rare appearances. So it might be like when Max kind of shows up randomly in the Meet Mickey Mouse area. But it looks like that'll be a pretty decent spot where you'll get to see maybe some very rare villains. Imagine if they brought Oogie in there. Imagine. Imagine. Oh, oh, Jesus. After the time that was last year. Flashback, flashback, PTSD, PTSD, PTSD. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, so DLP will still be having Halloween, just obviously in a slightly different way to it has normally. I hope they still play Viva V. Just the song. Just the just song. Just around. That's all I need. Ah, sure. Maybe they will. Now, going from your favourite thing to my favourite thing, let's talk about Cars. Go. So, Cars Route 66 Road Trip, which was the re... Um, not refurb, revamp, I guess, retheming of the tram tour. Uh, there has been progress slowly being remade on it uh, behind Toy Story Playland. As DLP reports say, pretty safe to assume it won't be coming down the road in 2020 at this point because it's honestly just still a big pile of dirt. <laughs> yeah. And, and in fairness, again, to reference Nick and Paul, I was listening to the latest episode of Discover DLP and they were both kind of saying if Disneyland Paris were to just kind of forget what they were planning to do with the Studio Tram Tour and just focus on getting Avengers Campus up and running, I'd be quite happy with that. 
Yeah, we don't really need that cars thing. Like no, I- like that's that's not going to bring fresh people to the park. Whereas a whole Avengers area that'll bring fresh people to the park. Yeah, because even we've seen with the visuals and the explanation of that Route 66 road trip, it's not actually like the the ride hasn't changed except for the fact that they've removed things. And yeah. you've got Mater and Lightning McQueen bringing you through it instead of those two famous actors. So, yeah, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. And moving back from my favorite things to one of your favorite things, <laughs> it's almost as if I structure the news that way. Can you believe what? It? So, like, I talk about my things, and you talk about your things. <laughs> that um so phantom manor the way they've been doing the stretching room in phantom manor because you have to go through the stretching room in phantom manor unlike in walt disney world is they have put little squares on the floor and everybody stands in the little squares where square man was killed seemingly so what they've started to do to help kind of avoid confusion is they've actually been numbering them they seem to have done a bit of a a bit of a diy stereotypical dlp way of doing it it was definitely some cast member that was like fuck this (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> honestly honestly so now there's little numbers in the square so when you go through they tell you what number you've to stand in so just a little tweak but it's good to see that they're doing what they can to keep everybody socially distant and try and make it as easy as possible for very confused people speaking of very confused people no nothing to the very confused people actually cowboy cookout barbecue is reclosing again until further notice this sunday september 6th um this is likely due to the park's low attendance that's pretty much it. Like, obviously the park is so quiet that they really don't need Cowboy Cookout open. And also out of all the restaurants in DLP, Cowboy Cookout is probably one of the least visited ones, I'm going to say, because of how far away it is. I don't know if like your layman guest knows where it is. So yeah, that's that. That's fair. And then one last thing for DLP that I completely forgot to put on the news is some updates for Extra Magic Time for September. So for September, Extra Magic Time in Disneyland Park, you've got Phantom Manor, Big Thunder Mountain, Pinocchio, The Carousel, Peter Pan's Flight, Dumbo, and The Teacups. And then in Discovery Land, you have Orbitron, Star Tours, and Hyperspace Mountain. And then over in Studios, we've got Crush's Coaster, Cars, Flying Carpets Over Agrabah, Ratatouille, Terror of Terror, Toy Soldiers, Slinky Dog, Zigzag Spin, and RC Racer. So basically everything. Yeah, I was like, are we missing anything? I think oh. it's only the studio, the tram tour, but I mean, that's closed anyway. It's so. closed, so no, there you go. Ding dang. Yeah. So I think that's everything for DLP. Yeah, now moving on to... Actually, we've uh, we've a little bit of state size news, but it's at the end. Moving on to just some other bits regarding Disney. Uh, GQ very recently released an article with John Boyega from the Star Wars trilogy and man did he go after Disney (laughs) yeah I haven't I haven't read the full article and I've seen a lot of people say online that a lot of news outlets are purposely pulling certain taglines from it Mm -hmm. yeah so and they're sensationalizing it based off that because unfortunately that's just what the media does media so i works, do yeah i do want to go in and actually read it but i mean it, it was very clear from the other two movies after force awakens that they had planned mm-hmm. on having finn as this important character and then they just sidetracked him completely yeah so one of the quotes lifted from the gq um article themselves like do you know when you have an article and they like lift their own quotes and put them in bigger so one of the ones that they put on themselves was what i say to disney is do not market a black character as important and then push them aside so john boyega basically came out and was like himself um oh rose rose um i've literally forgotten everyone's character Poe, that was, that's who I was thinking of. They literally, anyone who wasn't... The non-white characters. Yeah, anyone who wasn't Daisy Ridley or Adam Driver basically just got pushed to the side. We can call it out. It's the non-white characters. Yeah, if you were Caucasian, they didn't care. Which is really bad out. Considering when the first movie in that trilogy came out, everyone was like, wow, Jesus, diversity. What the fuck? And yeah. then they just didn't. 
And John Boyega, if you didn't know, has been so vocal. John Boyega, it's the, it was the Boyega that got me. John Boyega has been so vocal with the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. Like, unbelievably so. So I also haven't read the entire interview because I didn't find it about it. I didn't find out about it quick enough before we were going to record. And it is quite a long, lengthy read, but I'm definitely going to read it before I go to bed. So, yeah. If there is anything else to say on it, we'll probably talk about it next week. But, because it only just came out. But, yeah. Very interesting. I'll link it in the, I'll link it in the show notes of the episode as well. Again, it did come out earlier today, so neither of us have had a chance to read it. But if you do also want to check it out. So, sticking sticking with the... um, Star Warsy theme. We had an announcement for when we're going to have new episodes of The Mandalorian, which is I'm so excited. I didn't realize they had episodes ready to go. I thought they were still stuck in like post and stuff. Nah, man. So we're getting it October 30th, just before the best day of the year. I'm really excited. I love The Mandalorian. And obviously, I'm interested, I'm interested, interested to see what they do with baby Yoda slash the child because yeah it all they obviously due to the lack of merchandise that was released with the Mandalorian initially they did not realize mm. that baby Yoda was gonna be as popular as it was you know what I do you know what I don't get though Go on. they released baby Groot and they somehow didn't think that the baby Yoda stuff would kick off well like that all they did was just do a Star Wars equivalent to baby Groot yeah how, anyway, how could they not realize that so i'm interested to see if they keep the child in the same sort of mindset within the story or if they add unnecessary scenes just to go with the fans but yeah. i don't know i feel like between all the directors of the mandalorian i feel like none of them would go that way i feel like they're all very independent and they will just do what they want to do and yeah. like, you know, John Favreau, I feel like he doesn't take shit from anyone. So <laughs> I feel like if he was told to do that. something, he was like, nah, man, this is my show. Don't be fucking with it kind of thing. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But very interesting to have some dates on that. Mm-hmm. What's even more interesting is, so last week we talked about the fact that Mulan was going to have its premiere release in the European market and the dates for it and all that sort of stuff. But... Rumor on the rumor mill is that it's going to be available for everybody from December 4th this year, which is really not that far away. (laughs) No, it'll be, it'll be interesting. So I saw it on Twitter. I saw people talking about it on Twitter and somebody had noticed it, posted about it, and then seemingly it was removed from Mm. whatever communication it, it must have accidentally gone out with. So don't know if it's definitely december 4th however it'll be interesting to see if some if someone just accidentally released that date when they really shouldn't have but mm. yeah because now i know that one of the girls in the group chat put in that it was like this will be available and like the year 3000 or something so they'd obviously put a dummy one in and then maybe someone accidentally put the real one in but now yeah. there's nothing there at all. It just says available on 4th of September 2020. Watch with premiere access before its release requires an active Disney Plus subscription. It doesn't say mm. the whole due to licensing, blah, blah, blah. They've just taken it off completely. So I'm going to go with someone got fired. <laughs> but, oh, oh, you know, that's just, uh, yep. Yeah. So that's it for Disney Plus. Yeah. And then the teeny tiny little bit of parks news we have is coming from Walt Disney World because, well, non DLP park stuff, because we still don't have a date for Disneyland. So Disney Parks blog posted during the week a plethora of fun, spooky treats that are coming to the Magic Kingdom from September 15th and will be there right the way through to October 31st. And they seem to have just taken all the Halloween speciality things that they did last year and they're just repeating them this year, which I get because they're not getting that extra revenue coming in for Mickey's Not So Scary. So just reuse everything that you already did. Don't reinvent the wheel. Um, (laughs) Some 
some of the things that have like caught my eye that if I were there, I would like to try. I'd want to try the Constance for better or for worse wedding cake. Cause I think oh, I remember people saying that. I was remember really that. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Big fan from sleepy hollow. You can get a pumpkin spiced waffle sundae, which is pumpkin spice flavor, Mickey waffles topped with vanilla ice ice cream whipped cream caramel drizzle and sprinkles and honestly like could anything be made more for me because mm. holy god yeah it sounds beautiful um they have a not so poison apple cupcake which looks very nice and then they have a bunch of different kind of drinks and then the popcorn buckets and sippers and whatnot for this year again are very similar to last year's they've got the jack sipper again the oogie boogie head popkin popkin Pumpkin. <laughs> pumpkin and popcorn mixed together the popcorn bucket and then they have the mickey mouse pumpkin balloon popcorn bucket which I actually looks like it has one. massive amounts of popcorn yeah i really like that one i think it's really cute and then again hanging on with stuff that they had last year they have the three hitchhiking ghosts one's a sipper and i think two are like a po- one's a popcorn bucket one i think is supposed to have nachos or something in it and then but they have a madame leota sipper and she looks beautiful i just don't know how i feel about drinking out of madame leota's head yeah this like is very true eating out of oogie boogie's head makes sense because it's like oh oogie boogie's got all that like icky <laughs> stuff inside of it oh, yeah, yeah true, actually. but like it's like oh yeah madame Leota, you just sit there i'm just gonna sip your brain juice out like it doesn't really sit sip well your with brain me. juice out <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll I'll link this particular article that I have here. It's from the Diz and they've listed. So there's loads of treats coming to Epcot as well. And then there's also Animal Kingdom has a absolute bunch of stuff. Animal Kingdom seems to have a lot of drinks, mm. which I'm kind of on board with because there's one particular one that comes with a little like <gasps> stick that looks really nice. Pumpkin cheesecake like, cannoli. Doesn't that look glorious? And then the Hollywood Studios ones in particular look really nice there's also the backlot mm. express box of bones chocolate eclair Ooh, yes so if you want a oh, if you want a way to one make you sad because you can't be there and two make you hungry go check the link that we've put in the description truth truth <laughs> oh dear i'm so <laughs> sad like i'm honestly this is the first time in however this is what my first time in three years or so that i've not been in disney for halloween and it makes me so unbelievably sad. Look, Sinead, we're all sad. <laughs> we're all so, so sad. <laughs> I know. But anyways, speaking of things that made us sad. Yeah. So, Shop Disney UK had their Halloween merch release. Like, let's just take a moment for the fact that I'm the one introducing this topic. So, and I'm mad about it. So, Shop Disney UK had their halloween merch launch date uh this this previous tuesday right yeah and everyone was buzzing for it everyone was absolutely buzzing for it the advertising picture they used on the website for weeks was the hocus pocus spirit jersey that everyone has been absolutely fucking raving about not the shit one they had a couple of months ago the really nice purple one that has been recently in shop disney america so Everyone, everyone apparently on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram got up really early, as did Sinead, and they logged on, and it was almost like a Minnie Mouse main attraction release date, and everyone was refreshing and refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. Fucking, like, six items. Six fucking items. Four of which were there last year. Like, what an absolute nonsense. When you go into the Halloween section, there's 10,000 kids' costumes and, like, 10 other products that are Halloween-based. And fucking nothing to do with Hocus Pocus. None of the cute Halloween merch that America has. Even though in Disneyland Paris, they're using the same decals and the same um, outfits for the characters this year that they're using for the merch in both American parks. And yet Shop Disney over here got absolutely fucking nothing. And that morning, the fucking cheek of that social media team that morning on the instagram on the facebook they released their they released their post and they were like check out our phase one of our haunted mansion collection seen below and everyone was like false advertising you can't use a hocus pocus spirit jersey if you're not going to sell it 
first phase of what? You never mentioned it would be a phased release. What the fuck are you talking about? When is phase two? Is there a phase three? And I also, I'd just like to mention that the post was worded really badly because it only said phase one of our Haunted Man Mansion collection. Mentioned nothing about any of the other Halloween items. Like, I am mad yeah, for yeah. people. Like, it's disgusting. Shop Disney UK and Shop Disney Europe are ridiculous. Like, I just don't understand. Like, I understand the American market is big, but so is the European market. Like, yep. they're so blind to what people want. And people are screaming at them to give them their money. And they just won't do it. <sighs> it felt good to get that out. <sighs> I'm <just> saying it. <laughs> like, lads, Kate got that pas passionate about a shitty Halloween drop. Can you, can you imagine how I... So... I was like so mentally prepared. I had a mental like shopping list and like I I won't lie, like I had all I had a whole bunch of money transferred into pounds sitting on my Revolut. Like I had my card registered on my Shop Disney account. I had my address registered on my Shop Disney account. I was like ready to go and I was ready to spend probably an obnoxious amount of money on their Halloween stuff. Like I was good to go. I've had a shitty month and I was like, do you know, what? I'm just going to buy all the cute Halloween shit because I don't give a fuck. And do you know what? I didn't buy a single thing. Because, because it was all crap. Because the only thing that they actually released that I was vaguely interested in is they had a 2020 Disney store Halloween pin that had the same kind of like pie eyed Mickey and Minnie that they're using for all the merchandise, all the Halloween merchandise this year. And it said 2020 on it. And I was like, cool, I'll get that. And then I, w I must have spent at least 15 minutes refreshing the page being like, but, but where's everything else? Cause they released a quote unquote boy and a girl's like baby onesies. They released the Minnie Mouse witch costume that they have every year and the hat that goes along with it. They released no adult apparel in any way, shape or form. There were these really shitty villains mugs. There was a pumpkin pillow which i don't need because i already have a pumpkin pillow um there was like a halloweeny colored bauble wreath which again i have absolutely no need for also, and it no, just no you're just anyone else it was like... just the whole thing was just so so Me... disappointing and again like i was ready to spend a very significant amount of money and nothing the only Moment. thing they had that people wanted from the US was that Haunted Mansion lounge fly backpack. Of... Yeah, and the fucking card holder that I ordered from Double Box Toys that I fucking needn't have. Yeah, oh. and like, but the thing is, it was like a Minnie Mouse main attraction release, but just with that backpack. I think it sold out in like 30 seconds. It's like it was like yeah. gone. And yeah. it's the bots. It's all bots. Bots, 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 bots. bots. I hate them. They're ruining the fun yeah. for everybody. And I wish Shop Disney would do something about it. I know they won't. I know they don't care. But there's so many yeah. poster companies out there that are finding the box and they're canceling their orders. And it just means that they're keeping their customers happy. And I just, I wish they would just cop on. Yeah, it's just, it's really, it's, it's so frustrating because... I just, I don't understand. And even speaking of kind of like the bots and the people just buying stuff up. So in the past week, I've seen online, I don't know when or where they're actually getting released, but they have the two Disneyland 65th anniversary uh, Funko Pops. One is Mickey Mouse with the Disneyland castle. And then the other one is the Disneyland castle, but with Walt. And oh, Walt yeah. is holding a little Mickey Mouse and they're mm -hmm. so freaking cute. However... The only limit on them were guests could buy up to 10 per guest. And then they were selling on eBay later for $400. Like 10. One. That's maybe not a limit. Two. Maybe. It should, be, it should be two per household. Yeah. But like they do that with Minnie Mouse main attraction. It's one per guest, two per household. Boom. Done. Yeah. That's it. And you've got fucking all the Americans buying up everything. And they're just ruining yeah. it. And it's just, it just becomes no fun. And you get to the stage where you give up. Like I did with Minnie Mouse Main Attraction. I got it the first month, tried for the second month, failed. Tried for the third month, failed. So then after that, I was like, fuck it, I don't care anymore. And now I don't even try. So like, they're only losing customers by doing this. I understand that they're getting the money anyway. But yeah, I just, I wish they would just care a little bit more about their guests. Yeah, it's really, it's just, it's so... It's just so bloody frustrating. And it kind of does get you to the stage where you're just like, right, well, I don't care anymore. Yeah. 
because there's just there's no point i'm actually going to look up the disneyland 65th anniversary where's our spare jerseys where's our ears where's our trick-or-treat bags where is our everything give me that candle i want that candle yeah like if they yeah so the walt disney the one with walt disney and the castle is currently 198 euro nope and it got released for i think about 30 what just yeah that's outrageous yep i hate people but yeah i don't know when the second drop is planned i have no idea but i'm honestly really bloody frustrated about it but the only thing is that and something that i actually only copped earlier so, so you know how i love cake worthy and i love truffle shuffle correct yes these are true facts so last year they d- so if anybody doesn't know cake worthy are the brand that do one those really cute dresses that just have like the overall disney print on them and they kind of have like a little button down top but also they do the like flannel shirts that have little sayings from like predominantly disney movies and stuff so last year they did a hocus pocus collection and i couldn't get the shirt that i wanted but they're re-releasing them this year so i'm gonna get a hocus pocus one but i don't i'm torn should i get it's just a bunch of hocus pocus or should i get a muck a muck a muck i think you should get just a bunch of hocus pocus i think so too because it's great that's my favorite one i prefer that one i agree but yeah shop disney really really freaking pissed me off this week because it, it there's just been such a big deal made about it and then to just turn around and be like, nah, man, we're not, you're not going to have anything. Yeah, it's just very annoying. And like on the day to be like, oh, this is phase one. And then for every like 10, 10 angry comments you had, the, the 11th would be, is no one else reading that this is phase one? <laughs> and everyone was like, no, you're not, you're missing the points. Like never, never did they say that this would be a phase release ever. Yeah. And like, to be fair, when they do the Christmas decorations, they're always phased releases and they always say it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's not like this is the first time they've ever done a phased release. So either the stuff isn't ready to go or they're just not doing it. Fair. It's just really frustrating. So who knows when the next releases are, but hopefully I'll be able to get the bits. Sorry, I went on and had a look at the Truffle Shuffle shirt that I want and I didn't realise it says Winifred on the collar. Oh, cute. (laughs) Hi, hello, my name is Winifred. <laughs> You're cute. So, yeah. So that's most things for, for news. Is there anything else that you want to add before we close out with our final piece of news? No, I think that's everything. So the final piece of news that we'll kind of finish out the the episode with is on the 29th, so this past week, we unfortunately had the very, very sad news of the amazing Chadwick Boseman, King T'Challa, Black Panther, unfortunately passed away after a pretty nasty battle with cancer. And honestly, it shook the internet. I think it shook everyone. It just, yeah. we woke up and Ed was like, Chadwick Boseman's passed away. I was like, what? I was like, no, he hasn't. And he was like, he has. I was like, my initial thought was, was he in a car crash? I was like, what kind of accident was he in? And he was like, no, he had stage three colon cancer. And I was like, oh my God. He was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer in 2016. And he's been battling it for the past four years and progressed to stage four. He filmed Black Panther while battling stage three colon cancer. And I don't think there will ever be a stronger Avenger. No. Like it just and like obviously there's kind of that trend of when somebody famous dies, people post about them and all this kind of stuff. Never have I seen the only other time I can probably think about it was when Carrie Fisher passed away, where there was such an overwhelming, like just outburst of emotion from everybody. And obviously, with everything that is going on at the minute with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, like Chadwick Boseman and Black Panther, like it gave so many, so many little kids that didn't have superheroes that looked like them, finally somebody that they could look up to and say, I want to be just like Black Panther. I want to be just like King T'Challa mm-hmm. or any of the absolutely fucking badass black women that are also in that movie as well. Like it gave such an amazing platform to for all of these kids and all of these kids that are now 
so passionate about everything that's going on with all the racial injustices that are happening in America and across the world. And it's just, oh, it was, it was an intense day. Yeah, it was a lot. And yeah, he truly was one of the best Avengers. He visited so many kids in cancer wards when nobody knew what was going on. And it is truly like, I, I think I can speak for the both of us when I say nothing but our whole sympathies go out to his wife and his family for his passing because as much as it hurts us, we just will never know how much it hurts them. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have lived under a rock and you haven't gone and watched Black Panther, go watch Black Panther. I, I, I challenge anybody to tell me Black Panther isn't one of the best movies that is part of the MCU because you're wrong. Sorry. <laughs> you're just plain wrong. Yeah, no, you're right. So on that note. Yeah, I think that's everything for this week. Thanks so much for listening, so. guys. If you want to hit us up on Instagram, it's at Mickey Waffles Pod. And if you want to hit us up on Twitter, it's the same thing. Sounds the S. But, you know, don't bother. Just hit us up on Instagram. Yeah, we're... we're we're much more active on Instagram. Yes. And again, thank you very much for listening. Please don't forget to leave us a review if you're listening on Apple Podcast or just share the podcast on any of your various social medias. If you feel like some of your friends might enjoy it, please do share it along because it really helps us out. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We will have Ryan on next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>